Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. I'm deeply honored to welcome Jim Witt to the show today because you need to know about him. I don't know if any of you have heard of the Weather Whiz, but along with Jim's very long professional life in teaching, he is a huge philanthropist who has created the Hope for Youth Foundation and has raised millions of dollars for children who are at risk, who are having difficulties, and he has created a long-range weather calendar with all proceeds going directly to children's charities. He's also been on radio and television for years and been part of creating a software program that, believe it or not, produces long-range weather forecasting that involves the sun, the moon, the gravitational pull of the Earth, other planets, And it's very unusual because we don't really have anybody in the world doing what Jim's doing. I'm going to let him explain it to us. He is a rare breed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jim Witt to It's Rainmaking Time. Well, thank you, Kim. That's quite an introduction. It's true. I also didn't say that you're a meteorologist as well. (laughs) Yes, I am. We don't want to leave that part out. No, I do that each day to the, as it goes on, uh, <laughs> even at the present time. I do broadcasts around the country, uh, and I do that to, again, raise money for, for children. So uh, most of what I do is just charity and uh, raising money. Now, you sell a lot of these calendars and all these proceeds. Does it go to Hope for Youth Foundation or others? No, oh yes, they in other words, the Hope for Youth Foundation is sort of like a collecting base. We collect the monies and then we distribute it to about 50 to 55 different organizations. Some that you would know about like Ronald McDonald House or Make-A-Wish Foundation uh and others that like we have Friends of Karen which deals with youngsters that have very serious or terminally ill diseases, ter- terminal diseases, and as a result, they get this money, and we try to help the family get through such a terrible situation as a, a dying child. So that, that makes us feel good to see some progress in that area. You have to be selling a lot of these calendars to bring in that kind of money. What are the number of calendars you roughly produce a year or can produce a year? Well, we usually sell about uh, 20, 22,000 calendars a year. We only do it in the Northeast. In other words, it's a very localized thing, mostly the Hudson Valley, because as you get away from the Hudson Valley, people don't really know of me or the calendar. So, uh, we we raise most of them. Like I just got a phone call the other night. Uh, the guy called me and he said, "You still have calendars left?" And I have a few. He said, "I need twenty five calendars." I said, "Okay, I'll meet you somewhere." And he says, "I'll write out a check to the Hope for Youth Foundation." I fine because here we are in February and we're still selling calendars. But you know what? Most of us can use those calendars. Yes, indeed. And uh, the good part is when uh, December 31st, 2011 comes along, the calendar doesn't end. It goes to January 2012. And when the next year's calendar comes out, we start in November. So it's always a 15-month calendar with just gorgeous pictures of the Hudson Valley taken by a photographer named Joe Deutsch. 90 years old right now. Wow. Gets nothing for his uh, pictures. He just donates them. And so everybody in the Hope for Youth Foundation donates everything. They don't get any pay whatsoever. I can't even believe your resume, your background, how many awards you've gotten. They're all over the place. Distinguished Community Service Award, Annual Community Achievement Award, Distinguished Community Service Award, on and on, the Chester A. Smith Award, the Westchester ARC 2001 Friend of the Year Award, the 2003 Partnership Award, Peers Partnership Special Annual Award, Peers Influence, Peers. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The Rotary Foundation of Rotary International, James Witt, a Paul Harris Fellow in Appreciation of Tangible and Significant Assistance, given for the furtherance of better understanding and friendly relations among peoples of the world. And then, of course, you were invited to speak at the White House to to brief 
presidential advisors, which were economic, military, and, and energy leaders concerning expected winter weather conditions in Afghanistan mm. and also expected winter weather conditions in the U.S. And how would that affect the faltering economy? That's really an honor. When did you go there? Uh, a few years ago uh, with, with George W. Bush. What did he think of your long-range forecasting? Because that's not what's spread out around the United States. He has the calendar hanging up in his office when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fooled a lot of people, didn't I, Kim? Well, did you? Well, I must have with all these awards. Pretty amazing. Let's talk about the basis upon which you were able to do this long-range weather forecasting because you're not only out of the nine dots with respect to forecasting, you're off the planet with regard mm -hmm. to forecasting. And I want you to explain it to us because many people in traditional meteorology or climatology and geology would think when it comes to the sun, they would get it. But when it comes to the moon and other planets, hey, a little out there. So talk to us about it. Explain it to us. Well, years ago, I uh, taught for Na the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I taught space uh, weather and space science for NASA. And at that time, I did, well, I guess I got to know some pretty pretty highfalutin scientists down there. And uh, some of them worked with uh, the planets as they revolved around the sun and, uh, and how they affected uh, radio communication on the Earth. Uh, RCA had given me a scholarship uh, when I was in college because they thought I would turn out to be a pretty good teacher, and so they paid my tuition. So it was RCA and then at NASA where they were doing studies, finding out sunspots on the sun and how it would affect Earth weather and so forth. And I thought, wow, this is pretty good. So I went back to this school in, in Westchester County in New York, and I, I projected the sun on the ground on a piece of white paper, and I showed the students how the sunspots uh, moved across the sun day by day, and also, I showed them when the spots were in the northern part of the sun, uh, the cold weather was usually in the eastern part of the United States, whereas when the spots were in the southern part of the sun, we sort of got warmer weather here, and out in the western portion of the United States, it was colder. So I thought the planets had something to do with it. So what I did is I downloaded all the different harmonics that the planets could have, be it in conjunction, be it in opposition, but I downloaded all of them and put down exact dates when they all occurred. And then I went back and I downloaded the weather day by day in all the cities in the United States and most of them in the rest of the world. Big How did job. you get that? Yeah, I mean, job. first of all, how do you know when you downloaded it that it was correct information you were downloading to then put into a software program or to create a software program? Well, you have to, it's from the National Weather Service and it's been checked. And so you have to assume that they've done a good job. And in the European countries, sometimes the best I could start with was from 1977, which means that I had a lot of missing data, which hurt me. And I realized that I really need about 400 years of past weather data. And all I could get is maybe at some stations, 100. But what I found out, I had another student do a computer program for me so that I knew where every planet, the sun, the moon was at any given second. And then I would say to him, well, tell me where they will be 2,000 years from now and where they were 2,000 years ago. And he finally came back with that program. I had some good kids. And then I said, now I have one more request. If I pick a date, let's say August 17th, 2012, I want you to tell me what everything looked like in the sky then and after that, go back in the past and tell me when it was like that in the past. And so then.